Let's go. As the room fill up, be sure to smash upon the like button. Join the notification squad. Let's continue to grind to shine. Come on. Mama said there'll be days just like this. Good days. Melodies from heaven. Come on. Rain down on me. Cowboys looking for missing pieces. Adding Brandon Cooks plus more. The off season. Let me know how you guys feel. Let me know how you guys roll it with it. Yup. Ain't no party like a cowboy party. Yeah. 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 Come on. Let's get it. Be sure sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. Come on. Come on. One. Come on. Hey. Come on. All right. Let's get it. Yeah. Come on. What's good with you and you and you and you and you over there? Appreciate you guys so much for help growing the nation uh, as we stand tall about all of the conversations that we must go over. Hey, uh, it is what it is out here. And with that being said, you know, the, the the Cowboys way been different. The Cowboys been in a situation whereas we got to look at this thing and say to ourselves, are we better than what we were last year? Right. And the number one answer to that is yes, <laughs> we are. We starting off better. And organically speaking, I, I truly believe that we are better based off of some of the things we already did as it relates to in-house stuff, making sure things are put into proper perspectives, especially how we look at what we did getting rid of Kel and Moore, right? We added Mike Solari on the offensive line, you know, also we bringing in Schottenheimer. He's going to be pulling some of his daddy's stuff over here. And the Dallas Cowboys, one way or another, when we look back at it, we're going to bring forth big Mike McCarthy to do the quote unquote play callings. Right. So now you even get that of people being on the same page. I, I said this before, you want everyone singing on the same page, right? Singing from the same hymnal, you know, appreciate you so much. Brenda, thank you for uh, all that you do over here in the nation. And we really appreciate you so much. Let me see if I can pull your chat up. Yeah, uh, I want D-Hop, but I would take Cooks. Yeah, and let me talk and let me expound upon that because there were a lot of feeble-minded people and uh, while they looked that up in the dictionary, there were a lot of feeble-minded people thinking that Law Nation despised the pick up of Brandon Cooks, right? That Law Nation didn't like the move yesterday. And on top of that, if you pay attention to most what I said, if you guys pay attention to what I said yesterday, the news hit 
Law Nation was in a different type of mindset. The circadian rhythm was thrown off and the detailings of the report that was reported from David Moore wasn't all accurate. But I did say based upon what he tweeted out, right, my knowledge of it. And then from there, it went from 20 million to 18 million to the Texans. Right. When more and more information came about, it went from 18 million down to 12 million that the Cowboys is going to pay because they got the rest of the information. So sometimes you can be snake bitten by the information that's feeding into you and you submit it and you submit it out to the people and everybody want to hold your feet to the fire. But the episode was three hours long. And if you listen to midway through the episode, the right numbers came about and Brandon Cooks is here for 12 million. But here's the thing, regardless of that, the whole ideology of me wanting D-Hop had nothing to do with Brandon Cooks. Me wanting D-Hop had everything that I looked at that D-Hop was better, in my opinion, than Odell Beckham Jr. So stop putting words in Law Nation's mouth, right? So now that we got Brandon Cooks, now that he's on this team, and I'm going to speak to y'all with fire because most of y'all not used to your father speaking to you. So now you're listening to your daddy speaking to you. You know what I mean? So if anybody want to call in to debate me on what I said, when we open up the phone lines, be prepared to get these hands from my mouth. You know what I mean? Regardless of the situation. Nevertheless, here's the truth of it all. When I broke down, is Brandon Cooks better than? I asked you guys, is Brandon Cooks better than Jalen Tober? The answer is yes. Is Brandon Cooks better than Noah Brown? The answer is yes. Is Brandon Cooks right now better than Michael Gallup? The answer is yes. And I got a third of y'all foolish people going to try to say, well, Law, he's not better than Michael Gallup, Law. You must be out of your mind. You play Caden. Look, where on Michael Gallup's resume that he presented and put out the numbers that Brandon Cooks did. And excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, I like Michael Gallup. Stop trying to paint people into a box or into a corner and put people in boxes. Michael Gallup is still trying to ascend. The last time we seen Michael Gallup play up to the level that we all loved and we all liked and we all wanted to see more and more of Michael Gallup was in 2019. And excuse me, that was the last time he had a thousand yards, I believe. So what that states is, is regardless of what happened in 2020, 2021, 2022, regardless of injuries, etc., everyone have a reason. Write this down. But results are what matter. Results are what matter. So you may have a reason to do certain things, but the results are what matter. And that's life. You may have a reason that you want to do certain X, Y, and Z. But just because you have a reason to be a doctor, but your results dictate that you are a security guard and nothing more. Right. Or you are a Walmart employee. Right. This helping people out on aisle nine. But you're but you wanting to be a doctor, you wanting to be, uh, uh, I guess, a football player or you wanting to be certain things. But your results are what it, they are. And that's the reality of it. You can't escape the results. Common sense. First step to success is to try. Yes, indeed, common sense. Let's go. DC for life. Yes, indeed. You know, let me know. Let me know if I need to calm down just a little bit because y'all going to get the heat today. Y'all think I'm going to fold up like a wallet. No, 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 no. We in the right direction. Blue hearts. Appreciate you. Yes, indeed. Fire law. You know what I mean? Because y'all wasn't ready. Damn. You know, <laughs> I'm having fun today. Law, y'all forgot we still got Callaway. Damn. 
Oh, yes, one for each finger. And yes, woo, woo, we. Look, look, iron sharpens iron, steel sharpens steel. Yes, indeed, iron sharpens iron, steel sharpens steel. And when you have that, that means that everybody's going to be elevated up. Oh, my knee, oh, my back, oh, my neck and my back. Shoot, Callaway going to be like, shoot, I'm going to show y'all the best way. Oh, my goodness. Jalen Tolbert, hey, you know, I was drafted, man, you know. I was watching uh, uh, the uh, the Animal Planet in the Serengeti, the, the Witherbees, right? The Giselle. You know, all of the zebra or zebra, if you want to call it the right way. Right. And the lion out in the Serengeti, the lion, when he when he approaching. He don't ask, he just take it right. The survival of the fittest. And there will be people, many of people saying, oh, <laughs> that poor zebra, he don't have a chance. But that lion is like my poor belly touching his back. And if I don't go out there and take this kill and eat, then there going to be another lion that's going to be two times, three times bigger than me that's going to take over this pride. And there will be nobody, nobody showing sympathy when he eat me up, right? Or when he take of my pride and when he kill my youngins, right? This is a dog eat dog type of society. And, and life is like that even in the natural world. You know, that's just how it goes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and the lion can't be beta. He can't be feeble minded like a third of the people that were trying to attack law the other day. He can't be feeble about it. He can't go to the zebra and say, or oh, zebra, and say, may I have a piece of the corner of the ass? Can I just have a little slither, you know, and let me sink my teeth halfway through and just take chunks of it at a time? You may go, but I just need a piece, you know, and nobody, and nobody can tell the lion, hey, can you be a vegan can you go on a, a, a vegetarian diet? You know, can, that can help the world. You know, nobody can tell that to the lion. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> y'all know I'm just having fun with y'all. Y'all know I'm just having fun with y'all. As the room fill up, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Share this content. Let a friend or a neighbor know where to go. All right. Um, the Dallas Cowboys. We are in a good spot. We are. I appreciate y'all so much. I can go home now. You know what I'm saying? I can get out of the studio. I'm just playing with y'all. <laughs> but the Dallas Cowboys, we are in a good spot. And there's the full details of it. We're going to get right to it. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Yeah, let's go. What more can you tell us about how that deal, Cowboys and Texans, came together? Yeah, well, Dallas had been talking with Houston and Brandon Cooks about doing this trade back at the trade deadline in late October. So they had interest in him for a long time. Cooks has wanted out, wanted to go to a contender. And so Dallas figured once they got into March, like, hey, we don't love the free agency class necessarily. So right. we're going to sign safety Donovan Wilson. That was their priority. Then yeah. they got to work on the trade market. Got Stephon Gilmore from Indy, got their cornerback. And yeah. now they got Cooks. They finally found this morning a reasonable compensation package that they could be comfortable parting with. So the fifth and the sixth round pick, they felt like that was enough based on the speed that he provides opposite C.D. Lamb. And I'm hearing that Houston is going to cover some of his $18 million in guaranteed money. That's been the hang-up with Cooks. It's that salary, $18 million, fully guaranteed this year. Now, Dallas will be on the hook for a good chunk of that, but I think not all of it. All right, he has six 1,000-yard receiving seasons. He's done it for four different teams, so he can still produce. Just have game, will travel. He's like so when you think of Brandon Cooks, I, I, I think that this guy, he's a nuanced route capability. He, for his size of five foot ten, he can attack the ball while it's in the air. I always tell wide receivers, attack it while it's in the air. Don't allow the ball to hit your belly or frame. Uh, you want to get it in on top of that. He can catch the 50-50 ball. I think that he's quarterback friendly. Yeah, he comes back, greet the ball, and you see how he was able to split the defenders even at his statue. He's not afraid to go up and get it. 
He got quick speed, burst, acceleration. I, I think that he's a wonderful piece. You see him in stack formation here. Great design by the uh, the offensive coordinator there to put him in stack, knowing that he's going to get hit, ladies and gentlemen, and still follow through. Follow through with it, baby. So that's him taking the uh, abusement right there and still being able to come back with the ball, finding the soft spot in the zone here, making the opposition play, pay for playing that weak zone defense. So even on the top level, in the deeper thirds, he's able to find the soft spots in the zone and get that for you. And when you're talking about 50-50 ball coming down with it, he's not afraid. He's not afraid. Now, the quarterback got to lead him there, and he would do the rest. And this is Tyrod Taylor. Hey, and he got to lead him there, and he would take care of it. Hey, that type of separation is that, and he did it on the end of round right here. I like that. Cowboy Nation, that brings more weapon to our arsenal right there, being able to do the end of round. You can start thinking of things as if, though, you have Cavante Turpin out there on the field as well as with him. Those things that I really like here. And when we look back at this uh, as roll out to the right, just great vision getting back to the ball. Remember, not allowing the ball to hit his body or frame. Great setup, great play design. Shout out to Mills for putting it right there for him. But you got to look at this. Come back, greet the ball. Don't allow the ball to hit his frame or belly. And greet the ball, score the tub. And this is just a simple, simple play right here. And he takes it the distance. Those are things that I look for and I like, especially if you can turn something out of nothing. And he did just that, got blocked in front of him, and he does the rest. He can, he's tiny, right? You can barely see him. And he's already up field. This is against the Niners, right? Back shoulder, right inside. Great, great, great anticipation right there. Come back, squeezes, and put his hands on the ball. I like seeing that, Cowboy Nation. Come back, squeezes, get there, put the mittens on the ball. I like seeing that all the way. And this is against the Niners, 50-yard bomber. Come down with the ball. Come down with it against two guys. Against two guys. I like seeing that. Not afraid to reach out and touch and bring that ball home. I love it when you got a guy that's willing to pull that inside. Look at that. Two defenders. That Hey, that's what you would like to see, especially against those Niners. It's against the Niners again. It's prevent defense, though, underneath. Uh, the Texans didn't have a chance of winning that game. But at least you're seeing that the guy's willing to fight and play through the echoes of the whistles. I, I like seeing that Cowboy Nation. And when we look at all of those things, those are things that you want out of your wide receiver. Look, put 27 down on the grass. Let them know, hey, how that ground tastes, you know. So that's what I look for. And just, again, one-on-one -on -one to the outside, just abusing the young DB there. And he played with leverage there. So I like seeing that on the edge right here. Fight back to the ball. Hey, the ball belongs to me. I like seeing that, Cowboy Nation. And on top of that, huh, let's get there. Let's get there. Let's get there. Another play snuck out on the back end of it. Two people can catch that ball, him and the outer boundaries. I love when I'm able to see these type of things, just being able to take the top off the defense and making them pay for being late. You got to keep your eyes on 13. I don't know which number he's going to be wearing over here in Cowboys land, but you got to pay attention to that. All right, so keeping the play alive, moving your feet, never stopping your feet, looking for the soft spot, the open spot. If anybody was right about this dude, Eastside Harrow was in the last few years, right? He was talking about Brandon Cooks and these likes, and now we are able to see it from a different perspective. And now that you know that he don't have to be the number one, nor even in a pinch at times, don't even have to be the number two target. You can literally see him, not saying that he would be the third target all the time, right? But now you can see that the team's got to pick their poison because you got somebody like a C.D. Lamb, and if MG13 can be the X wide receiver primarily on the outside, you can utilize him in so many ways by lining him up inside and outside, and teams going to have to respect that. And especially, look at him. He lined up in the backfield on this play. So that's like him being the running back, and he's able to find the soft spots in the zone and to take that for the touchdown. 
down. So those are things that you look at when you see the Brandon Cooks, what he brings to the table from a film philosophy. We will break that down on another level and give you guys some thoughts on what he can and can't do as it relates to the negative connotations. But I wanted to highlight some of the good things. How can we utilize and use that in the Cowboys system? Well, last year and the year before that, we we pretty much – we pretty much, in the year before that, year before that, we pretty much ran verticals. Vertical offense require you to have a bigger wide receiver, right? And if you do have a smaller size wide receiver, then you can really bracket that. And you can really, you can really take that away. You're going to want your wide receivers to, to be bigger, have a higher catch radius, and things like that. But now in the West Coast, shoo, all is open because it's more of uh, it's more of deep overs, drags underneath shallows. Uh, you you may need a a big burly tight end or a fullback in the West Coast system, but nine times out of ten, the Dallas Cowboys will will run some type of variations of a hybrid West Coast, meaning that instead of under center, you will st- still have some plays and shotgun, but with West Coast principles. So then you would attack diagonally you know what I'm saying uh, not just north you would tack the field in a way whereas I'm going to match up my speed against your linebackers I'm going to match up my speed against your safeties I'm trying to get these guys on an island and that's where you can see where you can get your deep overs Some sometimes they will run some posts and some of course you know the natural routes will be in there but the but the type of routes would not be just north and south. You would have some east and west. That's a better way to say it, Cowboy Nation. And you would have some underneath and some overs, some screens, some some smokes, and all of those things will help out in this particular system. Now, the Cowboys, like you guys mentioned, you would now have uh, guys like Jalen Tobert, right, who runs a four four forty, who I believe got some size to him. You don't have to rush him out there now that you got a veteran wide receiver. You don't have to rush any of the other guys, Simi Fihoko. I think Simi will work well in this system in the West Coast. I, I think that the ideal that Mike McCarthy had for Simi last season, you will start seeing some of that, the hybrid look of a tight end. And I'm not saying that he can block well. Simi still got some things that we will have to go back in and say, all right, cool, let's see if he can do these things. But on the other side, on the flip side, ladies and gentlemen, you will have to uh, look at it from these perspectives. If anybody happy, it should be C.D. Lamb. It should be Dak Prescott. It also should be whatever running back that's fit in this system because you would not have one running back. The Cowboys will have, I believe, will utilize three running backs. They will lean on two primarily, but they will run a three-back system. They'll keep it fresh, and they will keep things in front of them. And the uh, Mike Solari block scheming on how he blocked for said running back or for quarterback it's a whole lot different. I see y'all with Rex. <laughs> Rex. It's different, y'all. <laughs> What's good with y'all? So you saying basically that the Eagles yard sale, the bird yard sale is getting bigger? Yes, 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 yes. But. I ain't worried about the Eagles. The Eagles worry about the Cowboys. That's just what it is. At the end of the day, if you just pay attention, you sit back, there will be more and more Eagle content creators talking about us versus us talking about them. They can't keep Big D out of their mouths. If you think I'm lying, just go to Twitter. It's all over Twitter. They love to talk about the boys, right? Let me know if I'm lying, right? Because I don't even know primarily what all they're doing, but I know they're losing some feathers over there, right? (laughs) But they're more worried about us versus we worried about them, collectively speaking. And from them, 
from them, they got to worry about a whole new system and a whole new other things that they got to figure out. And they got that first place schedule. You know, we'll see how all of that works out for them, you know. So they got to pay you. They got to pay hurts or what have you. And I feel y'all. They are falling apart. This is from my girl, Stargazer. Yeah, they falling apart. Cry, eagles, cry to the land of fumble football. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Darren says Eagles gonna have 40 comp picks on 2024. Laugh out loud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bruh. <laughs> but shout out to what all they are trying to mask up over there. That's just what it is. Let's tune in and listen in to uh some more audio on this Cook's situation, and then we're gonna talk about Alex. Is it Isaac Alec Holm? You know, we're going to talk about him being moved from offensive lineman to defensive lineman. Now, keep this in mind before I hit this play button. He's six foot six, 320 pounds. That might work. He might be all big boy down inside. I don't recognize nice. Tom P. Hoodie. After the week in the basement for free agency friends, he had to come <laughs> here to dress it down, to try to breathe for a moment, have actual human contact. Nice, it's right? always a I'm pleasure to you. come out here. I heard that you were the camouflage you could avoid any more Lamar questions. Mm. Is that mm -hmm. true? It would be better if you'd camouflage that collar that keeps popping out of your jacket. This collar's killing me. And Pellicero already <laughs> slinging mud. Welcome to the show, Tom. That's what Tom. we like here. Zing. My collar looks terrible. This I'll going. fix it. Don't exactly. worry. I can't wait for the break. That'll be fun. Takes us right into this. It is time now for the lead block. Lead block. Kyle, a couple wide receivers on the move over the weekend and another big name still Great. looking for a home. What can you tell us? Adam Thielen headed to we the Carolina Panthers. Adam Former Thielen. Vikings wide receiver. Man. This is a very legit deal. Here we go right here. Boom. Structured deal. Keeping him there. Keeping the offense. I'm almost there, y'all. Nice. Here we go. I don't recognize Cook's $18 million there we go. guaranteed salary. For the Cowboys, though, they get a guy who's somehow Brandon Cooks. How old is he, Kyle? 29. 32? 29! Brandon Cooks is somehow nice, Jason. He's about 29 years old. He can still run. It gives the Cowboys something they didn't have, which is just a pure vertical speed threat. So that's why they were willing to make the move for Brandon Cooks. And it also means that, in all likelihood, the Cowboys are out on Odell Beckham Jr. Okay. He, of course, had been Jerry's fancy for quite some time here. He envisioned him with the star on his helmet. They brought him in for a visit last year. Wasn't quite ready to play. Odell's ready to go now. He worked out for teams a couple of weeks ago. There were a bunch of teams that attended that workout. The Cowboys actually wanted Odell to come in and work out just for them in Dallas. It doesn't end up going that direction. There's still going to be competition for Odell. You saw his tweet over the weekend saying, I still haven't seen the quote where it says I'm asking for $20 million a year. He's not. The number's not that high, but he's not coming on the cheap either here. So where is the best fit for Odell? We'll find out that in the weeks to come. You know what's great? You're not on delay. You don't uh, have to wait. Awesome. You know what I mean? Like, that's we usually good. see Tom in the box, and then we say, hang around, don't go anywhere, and you're not going anywhere for the next three hours. So, anytime anything happens, we're just going straight across the desk. To oh, you. yes. The addition of Brandon Cooks is just one several uh, recent personnel decisions by the Cowboys. They have also acquired former Defensive Player of the Year, Stephon Gilmore. They tagged running back Tony Pollard on the flip side. They released Ezekiel Elliott. They lost Noah Brown to free agency. So, guys, what do we make of the Cowboys offseason mm. plan of attack so far, Jason? I've enjoyed it, and I think we just hit on Brandon Cooks. We talked about Stephon Gilmore coming over. But for Dallas, I've enjoyed them keeping their guys in-house. We saw some of them, they obviously cut Ezekiel Elliott. We saw Noah Brown leaving some of those guys. When we look at some of their notable free agents, it started with Tony Pollard, them tagging him and being able to bring him back. But look all the way at the bottom him there. Tyron Smith, a restructured deal, keeping him there, keeping their offensive line intact will go a long way. Cooper Rush, a guy that stepped up for them in Dak Prescott's absence last year, and then solidifying the defense. Vander Esch and Donovan Wilson coming back for them. And I think most importantly, at the beginning of the offseason, they were able to keep Dan Quinn on the defensive side. His genius and him drawing up the schemes. And now you look at this Dallas Cowboys team who won 12 games last year, and now you're adding a few pieces, but you're keeping 
keeping your guys that had that success. And I know the playoff drought and how they've been doing, not performing well, losing back-to-back -back years to the 49ers in the playoffs. But if you're Mike McCarthy, you're taking over the offense this year. You kept Dan Quinn. You're bringing your guys back. You've added a few pieces. This is a team where you start to feel good about them. I know every offseason we do, but for them, adding veteran pieces that can help you figure out how to win in those crucial moments, I think will go a long way for this Dallas Cowboys team. So I'm excited mm -hmm. at the moves that they've made this offseason, as every Cowboys fan is around this time of the year. But you should be excited. Oh, yeah, You've made the right moves that you were supposed to make, and we'll see where it lands them. They won a playoff game last year. Yeah. It, was, it was great. That was a really good season for the Cowboys. Tom, do you have any information? Is the package for the Cooks included any of the future therapy he's going to need for being traded over and <laughs> over? What is Brandon Cooks' deal? Why does no one want him? Why does no one love him? Why All right, so before he go any further in this, uh, I, I want to say this, too. Uh, we are we are dealing with a lot of impatience, right? Like we not lot we we don't have a lot of patience. That's a better way to say it. And the Cowboys, when you look at everything, the last two seasons with Mike McCarthy, twelve and five, twelve and five. One man Rocky was last year, right? You lose your starting quarterback. And somehow, one way or another, the Cowboys win four out of the uh, five games, putting the backup quarterback at four and one and the starting quarterback at eight and five. Right. So you add all of those things together. We still made it to the playoff game. Right. We did things that a lot of people would say, hey, the Cowboys are going to be one and done. The Cowboys were not going to make it to the playoff last season. So we overcame a lot, although although it's still not enough. We want more. And on top of that, if with better scheme and quarterback play, then one can argue that, yeah, maybe the Cowboys would have won more than one playoff game. Instead of crying about that, what the Cowboys do. Now they go into this season, they get rid of the old scheme. They put in more and more weapons around quarterback. And now they're saying, okay, let's up the ante. And on top of that, they extended Dak Prescott. So if we made it 12 and 5 last season, right? If we made it that far last season. With the likes of Noah Brown, with the aspect of my guy T.Y. Hilton coming into the mix at 33 years of age without a single day in training camp, OTAs, preseason. And he was able to do those things, ladies and gentlemen. That brings a lot to the table to help us out because now we got. Brandon Cooks here in the building now and now there's going to be a research of maybe going out there grabbing another running back in the draft or picking up another running back in the free agency I heard we, we, we entertaining Ronald Jones and I'm not saying that Ronald Jones can um, recreate the will and a whole bunch of other stuff <laughs> that boy loved to play basketball with the football he loved to dribble that football on the ground but they're leaving no stone unturned I would take that to the bank. Doesn't he say why? How come? You know he's been traded four times. Four. All he does every time is get traded, show up, be five foot ten, route people up, beat people deep, be a professional, never yeah. says squat, puts people up numbers, him. and yet nobody wants him. Let's save this clip right now, Tom, for a year from now <laughs> when Brandon Cooks is traded again, and you report it, and we will look back on. Are you into it? They've been trying to, to trade Brandon Cooks for a year now. Always. Which is amazing because the Texans <laughs> they initially. Redid his contract. Yep. They shaved off the last year because he was unhappy there. Okay, then a year later he's unhappy again, so they <laughs> extended his contract, gave him a bunch more guaranteed money, which made him untradeable. Now you finally have to do basically just a complete salary dump on the guy. He still can run. Yeah. That's well, Brandon yes, Cook's can. primary 29. skill. He's got speed, and you cannot yeah. buy speed. Well, you can. Yeah. You can give $12 million to <laughs> Brandon Cook. He's, he's a professional, and they got one. That's exactly what he does. So is that going to work out for the Cowboys? We'll find out. He's not the typical Mike McCarthy receiver. If you go back through all the years, like in Green Bay, it was James Jones. It was Greg Jennings. It was these guys who had these, mm. they were long-levered. Mm. They were bigger types of receivers, and they had really good hands. Brandon Cook's is a Are you gonna leave all around the car? of a guy. Is he going to fit? the way that Dallas wants to play. That might be the biggest part that wasn't on that board of the Cowboys offseason here, mm -hmm. which is parting ways with Kellen Moore, mm -hmm. Mike McCarthy taking over the offensive play calling. This is going to not just be a different play caller. This is a different scheme. Mm. 
I want this dude to lean forward just a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right there, you know. Get out of here, man. <laughs> Greg Jennings, I met that guy in real life. Let me know. Let me know if Greg Jennings, six foot, six foot one, six foot two, he ain't that tall. Greg Jennings by like five. 10, 5, 9 himself. Greg Jennings is not that tall. They may say he's 5'11", but he ain't that tall, dog. So lean forward again. So the narrative-based conversation, y'all got to stop that. You know what I mean? And, and then we all know how tall Randall Cobb is, man. Come on, y'all. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... <laughs> It is what it is. In West Coast, you don't need six foot four, six foot five. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> so it that's just what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Riggs. <laughs> you know, Riggs. I get too old for this, Riggs. <laughs> Yo, yo, Riggs. <laughs> Jen Jennings was an inch or so taller than Cobb, yo. Give or take, you know. They're going back to Mike McCarthy's version of the West Coast offense here. They are going to play differently. It's not going to be this, that quote that got taken completely out of context about running the football. Look at the run numbers from 2020 to 21 to 22. They ran a lot more. McCarthy yeah. was talking about 2020 when they were completely pass first and they got way out of whack. Yeah, he wants to be balanced. Mm -hmm. They brought back Tony Pollard. Losing Connor McGovern was a big deal to the Bills. That was one that they wanted to keep around here. Yeah. So you're still going to need probably another offensive lineman. Who knows what they're going to do at tight end? They drafted all those guys, but no Dalton Schultz right now, so you got some questions there. There's some other pieces they need to put into place, but for me, the biggest move of the entire offseason is a stylistic shift in terms of their offense. We'll see how it looks, but I would bet you that Dak Prescott's going to be really efficient with the mm. way that they're going to play. Mm. I always get accused of not saying mm. anything positive about the yeah. Cowboys, yeah. and rightfully so. I, I like this stuff. You know what I like is I, I feel like responsible choices are being mm. made. Like, you know those things back in the 80s, they had those bug lamps that you'd hang on a front porch and it'd be this blue electric thing and the bugs would just fly into it and die? Yeah. yeah. They can't help themselves. The light is so beautiful, they know they're going to die. They watch 50 of their friends die. It's like, I'm going to try. <laughs> Dead. <laughs> they didn't fly into the bug lamp. Odell is a bug lamp for yep. the Cowboys. Mm. Ezekiel Elliott is a bug lamp for the Cowboys. God dang. Ezekiel Elliott had morphed into a short yardage running back who was paying a lot of money. They got rid of him. I'm proud of them. Odell is born to be a Jerry Jones player, the star. We did the photoshops and all that. Big time bug lamp coming off an injury. They didn't get him, and they got something such more practical and prudent and responsible in Brandon Cooks. It's like they're all growing up. I'm very proud of the Cowboys. I'm impressed. Responsible choices that are not boring. They're still bold. Pollard and Cooks are still bold. They didn't mail it in. They did the non-cowboy thing, and maybe that'll work this year. I'm into it. It's the minivan of rosters is what you're saying here. Minivan. It's not flashy. Just get the thing with the sliding door. The kids like it. Easy in and out. Easy to clean. It's got a couple of screens in the back. Just do the right thing, because you've got all the other talent in place. They do. Between Dak Prescott, they tag Tony Pollard. You've got C.D. Lamb, who's a, a superstar got it. when he's That's on. Good. Mm -hmm. You've got a pretty good offensive line. And defensively, they're the best that they've ever been. You add Stephon Gilmore. Yeah, he was also flipped for a fifth-round pick, yeah. but that was not just a dump by the Cowboys. It's just a matter of having respect for Stephon Gilmore, who at this stage is looking at the Colts and saying, mm -hmm. this is probably a rebuild type yep. of a situation mm -hmm. yep. here. I'm in this. I want my legacy to be a certain way. Yep. I want a chance to win big. Let me go someplace else. And to the credit of the Colts and Chris Ballard, they were willing to work with him yeah. on that. So he's still, mm -hmm. he's still really, really good. Is he defensive player of the year, Stephon Gilmore? Mm -hmm. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. But he's, he's still an awfully good player. Mm -hmm. To Kyle's point about responsibility, I think I'm just surprised that it's not Odell. And I, I mean, so. it just, it was, it was the most obvious choice. And I think... <laughs> Shame. Shame. All right. For context. Shame. All right. So for context, let's add, let's add this in. All right. We still, ladies and gentlemen, got a glaring hole at running back. How do you guys feel? And a shout out to Gilmore. I, I think he bring, he's going to bring a lot to the table, ladies and gentlemen. The glaring hole at running back. The Cowboys going to have to figure this part out, right? 
do you sit back and say, all right, let me bring in a Harris. Let me bring in uh, Kareem Hunt. Or do you wait until the draft? Because I'm going to tell y'all, Ronald Jones, he going to fumble that ball. <laughs> and he may look good on this little cut up real here. And he's going to give you that if you fool around and pick him, right? He's going to give you a little wiggle. He ran 98 yards on this one, by the way. Uh, he's going to give you a little wiggle room. But if I am the running back guy for the Cowboys, I'm starting this thing off with TP. And then I'm giving Malik Davis a few reps here and there. And if they fool around and sign Ronald Jones, the last name sounds good for the Jones family, right? If they sign this dude, right? Rojo then I would look at it like this you will always need here's the way out on this camp body you will always need camp body <laughs> trust me you will always need a camp body somebody that can take some reps some bruises somebody that you can send in so Isaac Alicorn can run over somebody hey hey Rado Rado we need you to go through the middle man we want you to run through the middle we trying to work out big Jonathan Hagen and big Bo <laughs> we need a camp body <laughs> I'm for real though you need you need somebody to fall on the sword and, and camp is long camp is long <laughs> you gonna need that ladies and gentlemen you gonna need that you gonna need a camp body so I wouldn't even be mad if the Cowboys pick up Ronald Jones only if He's camp body because I'm looking at the tender life of running backs and I'm sitting there saying, hey, Tony Pollard. Now, we don't want you to go to Cabo and run those sands, right? We want you right here, but we're going to run some of these snaps with Ronald Jones, right? And, of course, whoever we draft, if it's an early round draft pick, let's say if the Cowboys do decide to pick up a B. John Robs. We gonna still need camp bodies. A few of you guys were talking about banging the table. Oh, Alfred Morris looked like he got more spring to his pop than Ezekiel Elliott in 2016, right? <laughs> so a lot of y'all was still on that movement. Remember that? So what I'm saying is, Cowboy Nation, don't be weary of any of these guys that they bring in. As it relates to a running back this season. Don't be weary of that. That's my thoughts. Because we're going to need camp bodies, baby. So uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I want to go over Isaac. I don't have any tape of him playing defensive lineman. But I'm going to tell you that you can picture a size of a six foot six, 320-pound guy who just got raw talent. If anything that you look at him... He don't have technique. He got strength. I don't know what he was doing in his native land. But I know for sure the brother got some strength. So if you fool around and add him to the defensive lineman on that experiment, and I don't know how much. <laughs> oh, oh, my bad, Nick. He said, nah, he's 6'7", 320. <laughs> He going to be your defensive tackle. I don't know how much money they give. Uh, the NFL gives the uh, teams that have international players. I think that there's an extra stipend that they give out to teams. <laughs> but I can tell you, if you want to experiment with something and all you want them to do is lean forward enough to, and then hold up heads, when you think that they are about to pass, to block the passing lanes, and I just need somebody to lean forward 320 pounds, dog it, if Zeke 
can play center, then Isaac got a spot on his team to play defensive lineman. And I don't know, I don't want none of y'all talking about, hey, man, hold on, Lord. I ain't better than Isaac. We want you to line up across from him, you know, <laughs> and try to stop him. I want somebody in the chat to say, yeah, man, I can stop Isaac, man. Isaac Hayes, Isaac Alicorn, it don't matter. Popcorn, I can stop him. I wish you would try to. <laughs> Life of 728, man. If Zeke is playing center, then Isaac can play defensive line for your mind. <laughs> yeah, that guy is huge from a different perspective. Because when you try to play Isaac on the offensive side, right, there's so many things that you have to get right on the offensive side. Think of this. When you are... An offensive lineman, technically, technically, you're playing defense. You're not attacking unless it's a run play. Think about it. It's the inverse in football. When you're on the offensive lineman, you're playing defense. You're defending your running back or your quarterback. And your feet got to be in relations to your hand. And you can't stand upright. The taller the body, the faster you fall. So you got to get that six foot six, six foot seven frame down in a crawl spot. Because y'all already know that. <laughs> Phoenix Star says, I can stop him. I can stop him. <laughs> Mike Tyson's five foot 10, five foot 11. Ain't nobody in the chat would say, hey, Mike. In his prime. Hey, man, you short. Mike, you too short. <laughs> yeah, ain't nobody calling him too short, you know. But everybody sitting down can say, hey, man, Mike ain't hitting that hard. Now, <laughs> you get in that ring with him, you be like, hey, man, I, I was just playing, Mike, you know. <laughs> I saw a video a couple of, couple of years ago. Could have been a couple of months ago when the video was actually um, um, presented to us, right? But it was, I feel like a couple of years ago, there was a guy that was toying <laughs> with Mike Tyson on the airplane. Y'all remember that? He was just toying with him, man. And Mike Tyson minding his own business, but he probably look at it like, Mike Tyson is a celebrity now, you know? I could probably get him, you know? And Mike was probably like, man, stop playing with me, man. Stop playing with me. You know, you got that voice. I can't talk like Mike. But y'all know, know, know what I'm saying. <laughs> but Mike Tyson was like, you hit me one more time, I'm going to show you what I do, you know. And that guy got his face punched all the way in. <laughs> they said that uh, legends have it that his nose is on the back of his head, you know. <laughs> y'all better leave Mike Tyson alone. So with that being said, you better leave Isaac alone on that defensive front. I kind of like this move. Not saying that offensive lineman's job is easier than defensive lineman. But what I'm saying is that defensive lineman jobs is easier than offensive lineman. Normally, your offensive lineman guys, smartest guys in school, right? If you had a choice to cheat off of somebody's paper, and I'm not saying that you should. Cheat off an offensive lineman paper if you in school sitting next to an offensive lineman. Don't look at the defensive lineman guy paper. Right? You know what I'm saying? You might end up. <laughs> but neither here nor there. I do like the mindset of moving Isaac to that line. On the defensive side, whereas it's less study work, it's less things that he have to know. And all you can do is say, hey, we're going to line you up. We want you to shoot through the A-gap, penetrate, hopefully enough that teams can see that you are collapsing the pocket with all of their strength. And all we got to teach him to do is get low. <laughs> get low, get low, get low, man. Keep your pad levels low. Hands inside. Use that frame and kick. Get up in there. And then next year, we'll teach you how to swim move. <laughs> and then the next year after that, we'll teach you how to rip and disengage, right? Get inside, rip. 
gets engaged and get in there, you know. <laughs> so that's less mind stuff that he would have to learn. The technicalities can come down the line. Hey, there was a situation, true story. Who remember Rico Gathers? Who remember Rico Gathers? 6'8", phenomenal size. I think he was like 265, 270. And there was two choices for him. Two choices. Yeah, yellow flag. <laughs> but Rico Gathers, there was two choices for him. We can put you at tight end, defensive end. I think that now looking back, hindsight is 2020. They should have put him at defensive end. Law, do you have any truth to this? Julius Peppers. They gave him two choices. Defensive end, tight end. Why did they do that to him? Because he was a basketball player. Who remember uh, Julius Peppers? He didn't play for the Cowboys, by the way. He played for Carolina Panthers and went to the Packers. Who remember that? <laughs> right. Who remember that? He was a basketball player. Yeah, yeah. Keith Bruce. Remember that. But who remembered the transition? You know, they, they, hey, hey, man, he, all of those rebounds he in North Carolina, shoot. He could probably do the same on the NFL level. But being a tight end is one of the hardest positions to learn. Let me repeat, being the tight end, one of the hardest positions to learn. You got to know everything that the offensive line knows, have back know, and you got to know all of the wide receiver's responsibility, and you got to be in sync, not talking about the music group, with the quarterback. You got to be in sync with the quarterback. Now, there are blocking tight ends, and that's all they do, but that's a horrid job to be at. You want to be the tight end to get some action in. You want to be able to get some. But Peppers made the right and proper decision. I'm going to use my frame, I'm going to use my size, and I'm going to be a defensive edge guy. I'm going to use my athleticism to get there. Tony Gonzalez, yeah. Yeah, 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 he's a basketball player. Y'all see the correlations there, right? You know, basketball player, tight end. Now, some of it don't translate. Some of it, some of it the learning curve is too hard. Some of it depends on the system that you go to. And sometimes you could be doing it one way and learning it one way. And then all of a sudden, the way that you learn it that way, all, all of a sudden you get a new philosophy in and we want you to do it that way. Right? And then it messes you up. Yeah. <clears throat> Martellus Bennett. Yeah, he, he was pretty dope. He was pretty dope. All right, so David Irvin could have been so for, so much for us. I, I promise you guys. Smoke weed every day. If we had a time machine and we were able to pick up the old David Irvin that, that wanted to do that, where my button at? Here. Smoke weed every day. And put them in these days, right? Whereas you can roll them up and get John Legend high, right? He would have been phenomenal for us. That's the only thing. He wanted plants over pills, right? I mean, that dude was this God gifted, strong, Samson strong, pull a stop sign up out of the ground, you know? That, and look, Y'all go to a local stop sign. Antonio Gates is another guy. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all and Jimmy Graham. Boy, y'all know y'all tight ends, baby, that play basketball. I want y'all to go down the street. You know, not street, street. Go down the street and find a stop sign and try to pull it up out of the ground and whoop somebody with it. <laughs> That's what David Irvin did, man. He, he was telling somebody in college, man, lean forward a little bit, you know. <laughs> With the stop sign, pull it. True story. Pull the stop sign. <laughs> the Hulk smash. <laughs> I seen David Irvin, man. We didn't supposed to win that game against Green Bay. Shoot, David Irvin slapped that running back so hard. That running back was like, man. <laughs> He slapped that running back so hard with his head. Damn. Damn. 
That jungle pool, he slapped that, that ball, said, blah, 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 blah. that ball came up out of the ground. <laughs> David Irvin was just weird, man, putting nose rings and, and painted his hair yellow and orange. <laughs> Too big for all of that. Painted half of his face. Looked intimidating. You know what I'm saying? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> David Irvin was a monster, man. His stats and his numbers until the NFL started picking on him was right there with Aaron Donald, man. It was right up there, man. Yes, indeed. Uh, it just that uh, was stiping us a little bit, David Irvin and Randy Gregory, if you can just pick those boys up and put them in this modern day NFL rulings <laughs> where you can, you can you do whatever you want to do with the plant. You can snort the plant. You can roll the plant. You can put the plant infused into your dreads or what have you, and you won't get suspended. Man, that would have been phenomenal for us. I'm going to tell you, all David Irvin, I'm going to say this right quick before we uh, open up the phone lines. You know, I mean, this is a real true story, though. You know what I mean? David Irvin, he is responsible for the rule change. Law, do you have any truth to that? He put out a letter to sue the NFL, and it grew legs because the plants of appeals, they realized that all of that stuff that they was giving those boys, right? You know what I'm saying? Was damaging the lung, the spleen, the blood, was all messed up and toxic because you got all of that poison. Let me throw in my safe word, allegedly. You know what I'm saying? I don't want the NFL to come after me, you know. But he was the reason why, allegedly. Because they, he got a lawyer and everything, and they was like, you know what? This man got a strong case. You getting people addicted to the pills versus the plants, and he got a strong case. He had that lawsuit out there, and then all of a sudden, you know, because he was suspended for a while, you know. And then all of a sudden, he had got a knock at the door. Oh. Oh, oh I'm reinstated. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh, what a, oh, it's a check? Drop the lawsuit. Oh, okay. Now nah, I don't want to drop. Oh, it's an extra zero. My thumb was over it. Oh, man, there's no lawsuit. I'm good. I opened up me a uh, dispensary somewhere, man. I'm good. Oh, y'all going to pay for the dispensary, too? Shoo. <laughs> Allegedly, you know what I'm saying? And he's he's multi-billion. I don't have to play another down in football. Uh, we have two number ones. Cooks has always been a number one. CD Cooks are both number ones. We like that FA move. Let's go get a Sean Robinson and re-sign defensive tackle. Hankins, let's go get Bobby Wagner. Dr. Jackson, if that happened, man, I, that, that'll be the world for me, man. Out. I hit the button on myself. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Y'all know how it is. Allegedly, the, the the whole suit with Michael Irvin, the hundred million dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to go to that Marriott right now. I'm trying to find that lady right now myself, you know? <laughs> I'm going to Arizona Marriott. Hey, man, y'all make sure that camera work. Make sure that HD is there, man. Hey, somebody hold out. Somebody wait over there in the wings. Make sure. Make sure. I wouldn't sue for 100, though. You know what I'm saying? I just want a cool 10 million, you know? Jerry probably thinking he's running out of time with all of these splashes moving moves he's making. Yeah, Zach. Yeah, he, he, Jerry Jerry is long in the tooth, man. Jerry is long in the tooth. Y'all thinking the same thing. Don't call me wrong. Y'all thinking the same thing. Like, oh, boy, Mike, Mike got 100 million. Yeah, I don't shoot. 100 million shoe. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> shoot, let me take that. Cool. C Bass says a cool one hundo. You know what I mean? I feel you. Let's go. Call my phone, hit my line. Only ones who down for me. <laughs> All right, man. Let's go, baby. Fall line for your mind. Six five seven. Call my phone. Three nine oh seven three nine one. Let's go. 
Shout out to y'all for the support And thank y'all for the cash app too by the way Oh my god the cash app game yeah. two participants in the conference. Y'all been out y'all mind on cash app man muted. I appreciate y'all man Thank y'all Please for the yourself. Thank y'all for the prayers and wishes man I appreciate y'all so much Yeah Um, here's my thoughts uh, Sheila shout out to y'all It's pinned at the top 657390-7391 uh, Here's the thing though Cowboy Nation and Get on in here Get on in here We'll try to run it all the way up to 3, three o'clock etc Alright Dr. Q Alright he gone Alright so we're in the 205 you're live Cam Whoa, Cam. You Whoa, lie. Cam. <laughs> hey, Lord. I wasn't calling to get no football tape today. I really okay. ain't in the football mood, but, you know, anytime you get on, you know, you get online, you know, I'm going to come and I'm going to support. I just want to, you know, thank you, you know. And, you know, it's, I can give out a thousand thank you all day to you, but, you know, I just want to say thank you, you know, for, for doing this for the team, doing this for the, for the family, you know what I mean, and things of that nature. Uh, and, and just continue just just you know take time out from your family just to give us content. So I appreciate know, I that. Say, you know I appreciate you for that, man. And just you know always having an uplifting end into your to 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 your um to your show because you know we never know what nobody going through, but somebody could be watching. It. I feel like God always give you a word to give us at the end of your show just for whoever it may be watching us going through some 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 things that they are going through so I just want to say thank you man man you I appreciate you, you Cam man I thank you for that you know uh, we all boy if y'all know what I'm going through sometimes it be it be like peace and valleys man I call and I and I do this for for therapy man and I thank you man for uh for expressing your uh support for the nation I thank you thanks man thanks man oh uh, man uh Shout out to your brother too, and shout out uh -huh. to everybody you know who do this for the Cowboy Nation, no matter what is on the law. You see, and you get a special thanks, man, because you do this every day. You never take a day off, and if you do take a day off, you still giving us. Man, man, I'm still giving you little static <laughs> posts or something, man. I appreciate you, Cam. Thank right. you, man. Good, 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 good call right, from man. him, man. Oh yeah, good call from him. Yes, indeed, man. Uh, I'm telling y'all, man, you know, life, life itself is a fickle process. One day you're here, one day you're gone. Uh, your phone, your phone can change your whole mood, your whole, your cell phone. You get a certain, you get a certain text, you get a certain phone call. It will change your day. It will flat out change your day. So uh, just got to be prepared for the moment. And, and things like that. But that's just how it goes, unfortunately. Fortunately, I got Dr. Q from the 210. You in? <clears throat> What's going on, brother? Lord? This is Dr. Q, man. How you doing, brother? Oh, man, all is well. All is well. I, I, I hear you, man. Just just go back here in the States, man, for about a month, and I head back over to the islands. Mm. But, hey, man, uh, just sitting here, man, been listening to your show for for a couple of days, been trying to catch it, but I, I've been missing it. But, but um, I just wanted to uh, make a make a couple comments, man. Um, <clears throat> I like I like um, a few of the moves that we've done, and uh, I still I still think we just need to uh, address the DT defensive tackle. Uh, and if Gallup can give us at least one in this year, eighty five percent, this team this team's gonna be this team's gonna be all right. But mm -hmm. I wanted to address because I'm looking in the chat, and the, man, these guys just will not leave Dak alone. I don't know why. Oh, but oh my God. what's crazy, yeah. what's crazy, man, I'm not, I'm not sitting here trying to uh, uh, co-sign for Dak and, you know, you, you, you know we, we know Dak needs to make adjustments to his game, et cetera. Yeah. I want to just do this real quick because I know you got other callers. When I name you, tell me what is, when I give you these four names, man, tell me what they all have in common. John Elway, Dan Marino, Joe Montana, and Tom Brady. Well, we'll, 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 we'll exclude Tom Brady, but Joe Montana – Dan Marino and John Elway. What do they all have in common? Man, <laughs> they're quarterbacks. <laughs> I don't they're, know. They're quarterback. They all have yellow jackets, right? They all have yellow jackets, right? True. So they're true, all Hall of Famers, true, right? True. All three. 
So when they, these guys talk about Dak throwing 15 interceptions, it just amazes me, man, because I'm looking at stats. Did you know John Elway threw 23 interceptions in 1985, mm. Marino threw 23 in 86, and Montana threw 13 in 85? Mm. These guys are all Super Bowl winners, all Hall of Famers, but they want to get on Dak. And I'm not, I'm not saying Dak is at their level without any means, but okay. it takes time, man. I know, I, know it's been, I know it's been eight years, but yeah. we know how long it took John Elway to win. <laughs> but but they never say anything about the 23 interceptions she threw, but Dak threw 15. Now I don't want to say Dak is garbage, Dak is this. And like I said, I'm not sitting up here. Dak need, we know Dak needs to adjust his game and, and, and play better. But right. our fans, man, don't look at the big picture. It takes time, and they'll get there. And that's all I wanted to say, brother. No, 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 no doubt, man. Appreciate you, Dr. Q, man. Appreciate you for what you do for the nation okay. and beyond, man. Salute. Thank you, man. No, thank you. I appreciate it, brother. Y'all take yeah. Yes, indeed. Good call from him. Um, <clears throat> it's the only way Dak Prescott would be looked upon differently. He got to win the Super Bowl. He got to man, and getting to the Super Bowl is not an easy situation. Marino got there. What his first year or second year, something like that, and never seen it again. Right? Always had offensive weapons had down and ups on defense, but never got a chance to see that again. John Elway, greatest quarterback ever lived during that time frame when I was growing up. He was better than uh, Montana from those who are uh, saying, yeah, man, Joe Montana, Joe Montana. No, it was John. It was all John is the best quarterback, man. He just not in the right system. They created avenues and ways for him. And then when he got up against the Washington team, it was a big game. Washington won. They got blown out the woodshed, you know. And, uh, you know, it, it took another 10 years or so. And then John Elway finally uh, got a chance to win one. Now, John Elway, they did put TD in that uniform, and, and they were running, 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 and they had a stout defense. <clears throat> Good weapons, too, for John. And he had to win it all. He had to take – take it and say, hey, I can't get back to this moment, and he ran it in for a touchdown. Stretched out the ball and got over. So everything is forgotten once you win the, that, that Super Bowl, right? And uh, on top of that, the same could be said for the 49ers history or what have you, Steve Young versus Joe Montana. Steve Young would never got the praises until he won that Super Bowl. And uh, getting to the uh, championship game ain't enough for Dak Prescott, just like it wasn't enough for Steve Young. And one can argue that I'm not calling Dak Prescott Steve Young, but it will be the same storyline based upon the history of the Dallas Cowboys, right? There's only two quarterbacks with Super Bowl rings, Right? that started and played or what have you, right? Roger Starbuck, Troy Aikman. Let that sink in. Roger Starbuck, Troy Aikman. Cowboys, Cowboys been around since 1960. How many quarterbacks, how many quarterbacks play in a Dallas Cowboys uniform? So when you start looking at it like that, you realize going and playing and being in the Super Bowl is a difficult task. Let me know how many quarterbacks ever played for the Cowboys, and I can show you only two won the Super Bowl. Only two. Outside of now, I don't want semantics. I don't want people to say, hey, man, Brad Johnson, he played. But I'm talking about with, with us being the Cowboys because I know somebody will like, hey, man, Brad Johnson, man, he did play for the Cowboys. <laughs> Drew Bledsoe, he played for the Cowboys, although he didn't start. You know, I don't want that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he did. I wonder I wonder if Drew Bledsoe wear that Super Bowl ring that they won. <laughs> I bet you he don't wear that Super Bowl. He probably pawned that one. Yeah. Four, six, nine, what's on your mind? What's up, Law? Not much, man. Holler at me. 
This is Chris two one four man. Like I ain't been able to call you in I don't know man. how long, man. Work been busy. <laughs> you, 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 Chris two one four man. Look where you been, man. Man, work been busy, man. That's okay, like, man. You got I that big. To hit your show, man. You got that big dollars now, man. Making them big dollars now, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, man. I'm trying to. But uh, I was gonna ask you this: Do you think the front office has has like exercised trading Gallup now? Like I know that's probably highly unlikely, being that he just got paid, and being that the year that he had last year. But do you think they're trying to like kind of sniff that nose and see what they can get out of that? Any? Well, here's what we can't do: the, the the rushing of the Cowboys' front office, and now you're not getting the things that you thought you would get. That let's throw him out and throw the baby out with the bath water basically i think that there's still because somehow people there's a third of not third of the people but a few people think that i either hate michael gallup or i think that he's trash and those two things are so far apart from each other it's insane i, I think that the cowboys rushed michael gallup into playing and he wasn't fully recovered and as a macho man as a mindset hey you paid me the $60 million. I'm worth every penny. Let me prove to the world that I can play this sport. And it tarnished him a little bit because he didn't get his full recovery. So what I want the Cowboys to do now is to slowly bring Michael Gallup in. I think that his role as a three wide receiver, or number three wide receiver, quasi number two, will be phenomenal for us and he'll be more beneficial to us down the stretch versus rushing him out or even trading him. I've seen some people say, hey, Law, would you trade Gallup for DeAndre Hopkins right now? The answer is no to even that. I like D-Hop. Y'all know I like D-Hop. But I want people to understand that Gallup, there's still some unknown and I believe we can find that area if we just be patient. I got you. So that rule is out of us trying to drop the wide out in the first round, you think? It's like saying that we just got Brandon Cooks too, right? So Yeah. Just, well, we got Brandon off. Cooks, but if BPA is BPA, like like if you have Oh yeah. If if you have, let's say in the draft, a DK Metcalf, would you pass up on him in a second? You know what I'm saying? Or and I hate right. to use this because I know Eagles fans are watching, but if you would you would you pass up on an AJ Brown, right? If you had these guys right. like in the draft. And both of those guys, phenomenal at their pro days slash uh um combine, but they fell to the second round. So there will be a situation and scenario that there could be those type of wide receivers, not saying that we got that out of this draft. But if you trust your draft board, then you pick best player available. Gotcha. All right, man. Like, I like it. I like it. Well, I'm going to let you go, man. Shout out to Cowboys Nation. To you, Law. Y'all have a great day, man. No doubt, Ooh. man. That's Chris214, man. Making them big dollars, man. Got their promotion and everything, and in the dog on executive suite. I know, I know that's you, Chris. He got the executive suite. The whole time he was talking to me, you know, with his hands like this and saying, "Yeah, so law, you know, you know, we." <laughs> <laughs> Everyone got that executive pay now. You know, all right, uh, let's go to MJ from the 206. You in the mix. What up, Law? How you doing, brother? Well. Yeah, well, 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 that's good, man. That's good, brother. Hey, I'm uh, happy for the drive, for the uh, pickup. I told y'all we got that speed burn, huh? That's what we needed. Yep. I didn't want no Hopkins. You know, okay. I kept telling her I didn't want Hopkins, and I didn't want no uh, Judy because we already got there with CeeDee Lamb, and we got there with Gallup. So we don't need them type of players. We need a speed burner, a, a proven one that could do all type of things from the okay. back, outside, slot, dangerous, over the top. So 
So now it's going to open it up for the tight ends and definitely for your boy CD. CD finna really eat. And then you got Pollard in the backfield with them screens. And and I ain't worried about no halfback because they're going to get they – they got him and uh, Davis. So they're going to get another back. Like you said, if they do pick that dude up from Tampa Bay, he might get cut because whatever back – if we get Kendrick I – don't, I, don't, I don't want no B. John in the first round. I'd rather have a, 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 a offensive lineman or a defensive tackle. One of them. Uh, mm-hmm. The guy from Baylor, the guy from Michigan, or the guy from Wisconsin. That's what I'm hoping we get one of them in the second round or the first. Doesn't matter. And one of them guards or one of them tackles. That'll be perfect. And then just go on and you just start eating. Yep. Then you get your half back. You know, Big me. Kendra Miller, cold blooded, six man, two twenty, can take it to the house. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not worried about no halfback. That's my least worry. Now I like what they're doing with me, uh, with the kid that used to play guard for us because he's, you know, they probably seen some. I bet your boy Dan Quinn said, "Man, put that guy D tackle." Let, let me work. Let, let me work with him. That what Dan Quinn said. Let me get a piece yeah. of him. That what Dan Quinn yeah. said about Isaac. Let me get a piece of him. And I ain't talking about Hayes. Let me get the Isaac over there. You know. You know. Let me. Let me see what I can do with six foot seven. That was somebody said. Let me get a piece of him. Yeah, three hundred and twenty pounds, man. Let me see what he can do. But <laughs> so the good thing. Like you say, he ain't got to be thinking no more because now he was getting better anyway. And now you got to remember, if he's paying all right, he already played the position so he know what the guard's going to do and he know what the tackle's going to do. So now you just teach him a technique just like you said, and he just get to rush and rush. Hey, 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 MJ, oh year one. Bull rush. That's all we want you to do. Lawyer pass, yeah. bull rush. That's the quarterback. You know, I want you to pick up the center and just lean forward. <laughs> and then we're going to yeah. teach you how to disengage later. You know, we'll teach you how to disengage. But we just want you to get in the way. <laughs> so when Big Bo tired or when the other guy's tired, we rotate you in. Bull rush. Fourth quarter, Isaac. Yeah. That's what he's going to be. Fourth quarter, yeah. Isaac. You know. And then when they're passing, well, you know, we want you to put hallelujah, you know. <laughs> so I'm going to have yeah. a bull horn. And when I say hallelujah, uh, <laughs> that just means you hold your head up. Pass the lane. You'll block it, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then look, look, Law, because uh, I know me and you thinking on the same page. Dan, see, I'm going to tell y'all something, Cowboy fan. Them guys in there, they wasn't working as a team. Right. McCarthy is so happy. He got so much control. And, and Cowboy listening. Cowboy doing everything he tell him to do. And Jerry. He probably told Jerry and Cowboy, Cowboy. Hey, Steven. Hey, man. Like when you had Keller Mark, I either do it my way or get rid of him and give it to Keller. You see what yeah. it got you? Look, yeah. we lost two years in a row by the same team doing the same damn thing. Yes, indeed. Let me go man. my way because I know how to play them. What happened when I had them? When I used to play San Francisco with Green Bay, what did I do to them? I mm-hmm. beat them, did I? Yeah, he did. He did. They probably say, yeah, you're right. So, man, let me do it my way. And, we got the, and, he, and, you know, and he loved Dan Quinn. We got the best defensive coordinator. Man, we're going to yeah. kill this thing. Yeah, we're about and to kill it. And they're all on the same page. Yes. They're on the same page, man. I'm telling y'all. With Will McClay, man, they're going to have a defense cold-blooded. And they're still going to sign Hankin. They gonna sign Hank, but man, they gonna they gonna need to hurry up to in to do that. Uh, uh, one more point before I let you roll. We got some more people in here, man. One more point, man. Y'all guys, I'm gonna tell y'all something. I gotta keep telling y'all again. This is to Brandon and to all the haters. <laughs> you guys hate it, I, and I know. Oh, I bet you a million dollars, Brandon was kissing Dak Prescott butt in 2016 when he took him to the game against Green Bay. They was 20, they had 20 touchdowns and four interceptions. I know you heard this, Brandon, and all the other haters. And y'all was bragging. And then we got this stupid uh, video king, Raheem, put that in that quarterback mind that he was Dan Marino. And took this man out of his realm that he wasn't. 
Hey, it's man. gonna bear that man the right <laughs> way. I, I, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, MJ, man. Yeah. Thank you so, so much up, for man. calling in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> let me hear you say it before I let you roll, man. Uh, how about them cowboys? This is our year. Let's get this chip. Salute. Salute, man. All right, man. We're going to give the room about another three minutes before we lock it down. Appreciate y'all, man. We got Aaron, and then we have Quinn, and then we have the 304. All right, Aaron from Long Beach. You're live, fam. Hey, man. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing well, man. Talk to me, man. Uh, what I'm I don't know. I got a little mixed feelings about the Brandon Cook, but I'm glad we got him. Break it down, man. And then uh, I, I wanted D-Hop. You wanted DeAndre I Hopkins. I, I wanted D-Hop too, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but 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 we got we got we got we got speed. We got a guy that could be on the opposite side of CD. You can put him anywhere on the uh, wide receiver point bunch. And uh, I'm gonna do a full film analysis of it, man. And uh, He's better than what we had last year at wide receiver. Oh, yeah, Two, yeah, three, day. and four, five yeah, down the line. Yeah. Yeah. We have upgraded. definitely upgraded in the spots that we needed to upgrade during this free agency. Um, that that offensive line you saw about, what's his name, Alicom? Isaac. Yeah, switching over. Isaac, bro. Hey, I'm with that. I'm with that. One second, he bull rush. Oh, man, you got it. Bull rush, man. <laughs> Well, I ain't gonna hold you up. I'm still at work long, but you know, I'm trying to get you to tomorrow. But, Hit me up tomorrow. Uh, Gold dude. Cowboys. Yeah, no and oh, uh, that's what I wanted to say. Gold do Cowboys. You really Robertson, do you think B. John Robertson is gonna drop to this in the draft? I mean, if he, like, I heard reports, like, I heard people, I was listening to 105 uh, early this morning, and there was a guy, I think from Landry or something like that, he was saying that if you be out your mind, if you pass up on B. John Robinson, but then there would be, what, 24, 25 other teams out of their mind if they pass up on him. If he's, if he's that great and he falls to the 26th spot, then there are other teams that's out of their mind, right? Right, exactly. So now, if that happens, that moves more offensive defensive line I got to between those the right. I mean, those yep. picks. True that. For sure, for sure. All right, Law. I'll meet you later. Yep. Appreciate you, man. Um, <clears throat> like I'm, and, and then when I say these things, what y'all got to do as listeners, y'all can't put or paint a person into a corner because they have an opinion of something. I'm gonna stand on my opinion. And I'll be wrong all year. Like, I was wrong all year when I said, hey, man, the Cowboys should look at D.K. Metcalf. All of y'all were like, man, you know, Michael Gallup is better than D.K. Metcalf. What, watch what Michael Gallup do. And we don't need a D.K. Metcalf because we got James Washington. Just think about it. Wide receiver by committee. A third of you guys are like, hey, man, we don't need him. You know what I'm saying? What you saying, Law? We good. We don't need him. So I was wrong all year. And then when it get down to crunch time, hey, you know what? DK Metcalf on the other side of CD Lab, shoot, that look good, man. Shoot, man, shoot, we forget about James Washington. Oh, oh, we don't need a DK Metcalf. Think of the promising future that Noah Brown got. You know, I, I I'll be wrong all year. There was not a single person that would sit back last year after the draft was saying, you know what? That Jalen Tober dude, shoo, he ain't going to have no growing pain. He's going to come straight out of South Alabama, and you put C. Law, I told you we didn't need D.K. Metcalf because you're going to put C.D. Lamb, and you're going to have Jalen Tober, and you're going to have Michael Gallup. You're going to forget all about Amari Cooper. You're going to forget all about Amari Cooper, Law, I promise you. And then those people that was banging and yelling out all loud to the high heavens, they don't they don't come back now to to say, hey, Law, I was wrong, man. <laughs> hey, Law, I was wrong, man. My bad, Law. You know what I mean? But now I was look like as a fool all that offseason, and now things are looking at it like, hey, like, that dude, Law, boy, he sure was right, man. You know, but that's just how it goes. But I want content creators to know 
that there's nothing wrong with standing on your opinion and sitting there. You know, don't be changing, swaying like, hey, you know what? Now, if someone brings something and you say, you know what, I agree with what that person said, then they're great. Right? Then they're great. The conference has been locked. She's a queen to be. Queen for the nine ten year life. Hey love. What's good? <laughs> um, I was just calling because I am happy about the um the cook pickup. I actually took time out to mm -hmm. watch a few of his games and I looked at his stats and I know that he's had um a few drops. Uh, he's consistent in that, isn't he? Yeah, um, he gonna get, he gonna get about six or seven drops though. You know, that's just gonna come with it. Yeah, but, yeah, but then at the same time with him having those drops, he still acquired over a thousand, you know, yards mm -hmm. a season. Yep. For you know all those seasons and stuff, and he's still fast. Um, yep. Very very fast, and so I think that he'll be a good pickup for us. Uh, hopefully, him and Dak can get out there on Dak's lot and do some um, <laughs> do some work. With Yo. the rest of the guys and everything, and I'm um, glad that Dak has been taking those guys out there and uh, getting some work in, uh, which they don't have to do, and they're putting in the extra work and the extra effort. So I'm looking forward to this season, um, and I just hope that they pick up uh, Wagner. I, I oh, hope that they uh, pick him. I hope they pick him up. I don't think that. I really don't think that it's going to happen because of the cost, um, but I hope that they do because we're headed in the right direction. Um, he would, wouldn't he be be one that would be like in the middle? Well, Bobby, yeah, you you be your mic. Uh, you put LVE to the weak side, or mm -hmm. Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn got his uniqueness on how he operate defenses. He. He may think that put Bobby on the weak side. I, I don't know how Dan Quinn will utilize Bobby Wagner in this type of uh, defense, but he is that guy that you will have to pay attention to. You you will have to pay uh -huh. attention to. Uh -huh. Yeah, you have to pay okay. attention to on that well. defensive side. I, I, I trust Dan Quinn. Two people I trust, and, and I'm leaning on trusting Mike McCarthy. You just got to bear with me, okay, Queen? But it's two people I trust. I trust Dan yeah, Quinn uh, now, and I trust Willie McClay. I I, I trust Will McClay. I I I lean on what he say when he speak. Mhm. Mm yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm really excited, and also I believe that uh, as far as Brandon Cook's salary, I believe that with his um, thousand yards a season and stuff mm -hmm. like that, I believe that he is worth the twelve million dollars. Uh, Law, you don't, but I do. Well, yeah, um, well, well. Here, here's what I believe: the money that you were gonna pay Dalton Schultz, oh, I would pay every penny to it for Brandon Cooks. You know what I mean? <laughs> so just shuffle yeah. the money around. Shoot, if we pay eleven oh, yeah. million dollars to Schultz, what's the difference of paying right. an extra five hundred thousand or such to to Bobby? Even not Bobby, but uh, yeah. to to the Brandon or or Bobby. Shoot, let's make some movement go from here. Yeah, so that's what I believe. Oh, I, I, I I'm never one, gonna put a, a work question. value. Go talk to me. I have one more question. Are we uh keeping Hendershot? Yeah, Do we yeah. We still have Hendershot. Yeah, we got him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's here for at least three, four oh, okay. years. Yeah. Oh, okay. So hopefully we'll get to see that that whole Fer Fergus shot. We call. <laughs> Call them Ferguson back uh, when they first came in. Hopefully we'll get to see some good play out of that Ferguson deal and leave Schultz over there. Let him go on where he gonna go. Yeah. And that's all I got. Let them hang, Cowboy Nation. And how about them Cowboys? How about them? This queen. She's a queen to be. <laughs> That that movie, I bet you people watching that movie right now. Let me go watch this movie, man. Law keeps singing that movie, man. Singing that song on that movie. <laughs> that juggle. Hop on one foot. Put like a dog. 
<laughs> had that lady doing everything. Every man need him a woman like that, right? All right, I got the 304. Then we have Jake the Great, but the 304, yeah, live. Yo, 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 what's good, Law? Oh, man, all, all is well, man. What's your name, fam? Hey, that's Say what? What's your, what, what, what is your name? Yeah. Hey, look. Hey, look. Hey, Lou. A L E W. Oh, A Lou. Okay. Man, what you got for yeah. the show, man? Yeah. So the, the 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 funny thing about what's going on right now is that you see, like, this is the first time since what maybe Bill Parcells, where you have confident coaches and they believe in them. Because mm-hmm. if you think about it, we really, you know, to go out and get somebody outside of what we drafted, mm-hmm. we don't do that. So we went out and got we traded our fifth round pick. For yeah. Solid, solid, solid player. Yeah, yeah. So with that being said, you know, now you have Dan Quinn, you got Mike McCarthy in the in the room, and they're actually making sense to Jerry Jones now. Right. They have to be saying, you know, they have to get to put their input on and signing off on these moves as well. They're not just going to go out and get them. You know, this, this, the days of T.O. is over. Yeah. So, you know, we're not going by that, Jay, that Jason Garrett or the Kellen Moore philosophy of, uh, you know, any receiver could be the number one receiver. Right, that's, right. Like, that's the dumbest thing that I've philosophy, ever seen yeah. or heard. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, now, we, you know, you're making these solid moves. Granted, we're not locked in any, any longer than a year or two, but you can still draft third, fourth round, fifth round, and get you some solid oh. receivers, sign CD, and let Brandon Cooks go on his way. But you have a stopgap. You have somebody to come in show these young receivers how to develop and how to run the routes and what they're looking for, you know, right. something they haven't had since Coop. And, yeah. you know, Coop was still, he, he was polished, but he still had, he, you know, he, he could still grow, you know, he could still learn, he could still develop, um, just in, in men, men, uh, mental capacity, you know what I mean? So I think it was an overall a good move, but you got people, they, they this is the first time we've had comedy coaches that they believe in and they're in those rooms and they're saying, hey, we don't want, you know, the mischiefs or the, the misfits. Or what was uh, Rod Marinelli, you know? He, he'd oh, get a bunch of – The team of orphans, you know. Uh, yeah, there, there yeah. you go. There yeah, you're going to ask for something, he, he man. Ask – Acts, acts abundantly, you know what I'm saying, and and, right. and that's what we got to start doing in life, man. You know, uh, you know, the the grand creator, his blessings don't don't come in 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 short uh, supplies, right? They come abundantly, you know. Cup runneth right, over. Right. So 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 when Jerry Jones said, "Man, I made a bargain with the man upstairs and said, "Hey, if I can just get one more." No, man, you made the deal with the wrong person because he give abundantly. So you got to start asking right. for things, man. Look, there's people right now that, that that limit themselves because where they grew up at. Some people think that $40,000 a year is a lot of coins, right? Why limit yourself? Right. Why why put that in the back burner, right? Why not why don't you right. think that you don't qualify for one hundred and forty thousand dollars a year? Your limitations of your mind d- does that. And when I was thinking and I was looking back at some of the old strategies the Cowboys would go out and do, I mean, they limit themselves. They would say, "Hey, we can't afford, or we don't have this, or we can't do." All of that was negative words, man. Mm-hmm. Go out there and make things happen. Look, anybody that you sign today, don't you know that uh, that a hundred and eleven billion dollars from amazon about to kick in go ahead man uh, uh, as queen say let them hang go balls deep into this thing go ahead and get the baby that's how you're gonna get it yeah. you can't get it by just watching it go and get it that's what that's my mentality you're right about that you're mm-hmm. right about that 100 percent, 100 percent. but i'm real interested to see what we're going to do with this draft I mean, we got to get a running back but he has to be in the second round the, the, the days of number one, you know, drafting number one and locking them in, and you know, the mm-hmm. days of Emmitt Smith are over. That's what they yeah. they're pride themselves on. The days of Emmitt Smith, Eric Dixon. Dixon, uh, yeah. No, excuse me, I was watching him earlier. Today, not Eric Dixon, but Tony Dorsett. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those days are over with. Yeah. You know, so you you got to have a two back set. The, the back can catch out the backfield. The back can line up in the slot. Maybe yeah. even a wild out. Yeah. Block. You got to have a. They got to be totally, you know, a, a full complete back. Yeah. But. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, shit. For what they've been doing, I'm, I'm happy with the moves they've made. We're still signing their own guys. We're not locked into too much. You know, they, 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 they damn near. They just dipping their toe in the water. They got to put yeah. the whole foot in. <laughs> they can put you know, that whole foot in. That's the problem. 
ahead and put your foot in there. Jump, yeah, in, there, you know. jump you, in there, man. <laughs> you out here messing around, you know. Yes, indeed, you know, man. Ain't nothing, hap- ain't nothing never happen if you ain't take a chance. Yeah, you got to take that chance, man. Hey, Lou, I appreciate yeah. you, man. Good call from you, fam. For sure. That's a good call from A. Lou, y'all, uh, from the 304. All right, so you guys get what I'm saying. You know, sometimes you just got to get in there. I mean, either you're going to be hot for me or cold for me. <laughs> I would rather for you to say, man, law, I can't stand you, man. I ain't watching no more. And get going. You know what I'm saying? Versus you sitting in the middle. Just like y'all doing with these likes, man. Y'all hit the like button. Share this content. Let's continue to grow. Let's grow this nation. All right. I got my dog, man, from the 561, Jake the Great. You're live. Yo, what's happening, Law? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you, Chief. I'll let me. Man, you know, the thing about life, man, things change within 24 hours. And, you know, uh, you know, people are allowed to change their mind. Mm-hmm. How do I feel about this Brandon Cooks? I'm going to tell you. Before I uh, get my opinion on Brandon Cooks, I was watching your last show. And right. He was talking about uh, uh, Odell Beckham, and you was comparing him to a Maserati. And yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute. A Maserati, but you can't even open the hood. Right. Man, this man is a, he's not just a clown. This man is the whole circus. I'm just like, damn, this man got two broken legs, and then he wants $20 million. And I'm just thinking, damn, do I really want to see this man? Doing the funky chicken and the and, and doing and doing the gritty out there in Dallas in the end zone and stuff. I'm like, yeah. man, this man saying he's bigger than Dallas. I'm yeah. like, hell, let me change my mind on this man. Get him out of here. I don't want him. So mm-hmm. I'm happy that we got the Brandon Cooks. I'm not like super excited. I'm like, it seems like Jason, not Jason Garrett, excuse me. Uh, uh, what's his name? J- uh, Jones, I forgot his name. Uh, but whatever. It seems like he's yeah. picking up a lot of mercenaries, you know, like proven veterans. And I like the way he's doing it. You know, I like the way he's operating, man. It's different. I almost don't recognize this team with the moves that they're doing. Or, like kind of or Jake, this could be uh, the fact that now that you got a philosopher thinker, right, a young philosopher thinker out of the building, right, and you are finally seeing what Mike McCarthy brings to the table. Because if you think about it, when Dan Quinn got here, what was the first thing he did? He started terraforming everything. He started bringing in his philosophy, his group of people, his thought track on how this guy will help benefit the team. And then we start seeing a growth of or, or a movement of free agency in Dallas, right? Because yep, Dan right. Quinn handled everything. We, it's not like we kept Rob Marinelli and said, hey, Rob Marinelli, we want you to be in the building, but we're going to let Dan Quinn be the coordinator. No, no, it was Dan Quinn and all of his philosophy and thoughts. And what the Cowboys tend to do, they try to be slick with it. They, and I'm not talking about the Joneses. Shout out to those boys and everything. But Doug Nussmeyer, by him being old weight that was left here, and Kellen Moore being old weight that was left here, those are also philosophies and people with thought tracks that have influences. And influences go a long way, ladies and gentlemen. But go ahead. Right, right. Uh, now, on this draft, right, now, I know a lot of people are taking the eye candy and they want uh, B. John Robinson. For right. me personally, like I said, we've seen what Kansas City did. I don't want to see any running back come off that board at least to the, the fourth round. And it might not be a favorable pick, but I want one of those big uglies, man. I want one of those six foot five country boys. I don't care if it's an offensive line or a defensive line. Probably not going to be defense, but an uh, offensive lineman just, you know, a, a body mover, you know what I'm saying? Because you can get a running back, but I, I don't like. It's not even worth it as a running back now to even go in the first round. If I'm BJ B. John Robinson, I'm putting a gun underneath my own car, underneath my own seat. <laughs> because if you think about it, yeah. Because look, you got five years for the cheap, and then they're gonna franchise tag you for, the, and then you're gonna, you know, what I'm saying they're gonna franchise tag you. So you're gonna take the most punishment, and then you're gonna get paid the least amount. It yeah, make sense. yeah. It now this was before hard. this was before my time. But do you remember when the Cowboys had an option to either draft Walter Payton or Randy White? You see, yeah, I think I was. Yeah, yeah, before your time too. 
little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 just a little bit. But 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 that but, case oh, study, oh, they, they went with they went with the ideology of which position lasts the longest, right? So nine times out of ten, the defensive guy or the offensive tackle guy or the safety guy or quarterback lasts longer than running backs, basically what I'm saying. But we'll go ahead. Yeah, the last thing I want to I want to make, you know, the, the NFL is changing into a passing league. But yeah. one thing I know about football, you can't change the stripes on the Tiger. And I feel like a team's gonna win the Super Bowl in the next couple of years, and they're gonna change all of it and make the league go back to what it was. And they're just gonna run the ball because the Eagles already showed you a little bit of what you can do if you just go back to physicalness. Because a lot of these linebackers are not really linebackers now; they're really safety so now if you yeah. just hmm, kick up some of the old school like what the 49ers are doing you're gonna dominate the league if you just put a two-headed monster and just run it up the gut every time you know but physicality man as always would be uh the number one deal appreciate you jake the great thank you no problem that's a good call from him all right so what what there's there's this thing right here whereas before you can get to calculus before you can get to advanced algebra, before you can get to uh, the complications of of knowing chemistry and beyond, you got to get your base done. You got to know your rudiments. You got to know the, before you can start doing equations, you got to know simple math. One plus one, two plus two. Five plus five, right? Uh, five times five, right? You got to start knowing your base before you can start doing advanced stuff. And basically, when you get to the advanced stuff, it's still on the same principles of your base. But a lot of people who skip class or didn't pay attention to what they needed to learn while doing their base, they get lost. They get lost when it's time to do the harder work. And then they realize and say, man, oh, man, chemistry, man, it's too hard, man. Oh, man, advanced algebra is too hard. Law, you got a degree in business administration, concentration, econ. How, man, that's too hard, man, because I knew and understood my base. And once you know your base, shoot, you can do any problem that's presented. So what happened here is the NFL then got caught up into the bright lights, into advanced algebra, advanced arithmetic, advanced this and stuff. But you take the TI calculator away and you take away some of the stuff that, that you use. Hear me out. That you use and utilize to get you there. You don't know how to win games the natural way. Case in point, Kelly Moore, right? <laughs> you know, you got to get back to your base. All of that advanced stuff, window dressing, putting, you know, armor all on the tires or whatever you're putting shine all over the car, making it look good. There are people right now you can see. I'm going to use cars as an analogy because there's more. There's more something that you can see tangibly. I've seen a dude riding around in the hood with some 324 rims and a donut, right? Like, dude, his priority is wrong, right? You got them 20 foes, but man, why that donut on there? And why that donut on there for more than two or three weeks? Hey, man, just trying to, you know, save up some more money. Well, why are you riding in that? Sell those 24-inch rims and get something that you can afford. Right? And watch. It could be, what, what is March? Some of those tax return money is falling off a little bit. And some people don't know how to do good with the pace. Right. And not allowing to make their money, make money for them. So they flashed out. They went to the club, spent two hundred and fifty dollars. That's the that's the actual. Write this down. That's the actual. <laughs> I might be talking too much, but that's the actual. Slip up right there. Trying to impress others, but buying a two hundred and fifty dollar bottle of dog on in. You know what I'm saying? To impress. That's the scam right there. You in the club, you paying two fifty, five hundred dollars for some bottle services when you could have just been smooth 
and said, hey, man, the meter spotted my crib. You know, and it put in on this, fellas, man. Shoot, you can get it at a discount at Sam Club. You know what I'm saying? Get a big old bottle from Sam Club, man. We're going to have the, 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 the groove spot at the crib. But they too worried about being flashy and forget about the base, right? Too worried about keeping up with everyone. And forget about the base. And the Cowboys, uh, unfortunately, been 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 forgetting about the base. And what Jake the Great said, you're going to eventually come back to physicality. And the Eagles were this close. This close. But they got too flashy. The quarterback fumbled the ball. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Here go. <laughs> the quarterback fumbled the ball, baby. <laughs> Jalen, y'all gonna win the Super Bowl. Y'all was up by 10 at halftime. My brother was calling. <laughs> Tupac and Biggie climbing out of the grave calling me, talking about them Eagles. Fly, Eagles, fly. And then after the last play was called, I couldn't find a single soul of any of those boys that said, fly, Eagles, fly. My brother was like, man, he was quiet, you know. <laughs> he went back. He went back to being quiet all year. You know what I'm saying? I got another brother that's an Eagle fan. He was going to talk about halftime. Hey, law, man, I'm going to jump on your show. I said, oh, you want to jump on the show now. But when y'all was losing, you know, you wasn't saying a word, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me let this. <laughs> Shout out to my brother, man. Damn. <laughs> DMV, man. Come on, man. You 240. You live, man. You live. What's going on, Law? What's going on, Law? Not much, man. <laughs> hey, man. Um, I'm liking the Brandon Cooks move. Um, okay. I've been guessing this after we um, got Stephon Gilmore because last um, offseason, Going into the last year, we were um, we we wanted to sign Gilmore off coming off the Patriots, and we wanted to sign Cooks, and they both signed a one-year deal to their or their, they both signed a deal to those two losing teams. And I, I was I was like those were, if we would have had that those two additions last year, we'd have been a much better team. So I'm happy we got them going into this year. Um, but I think the face of this thing is done. Like our we, we pretty much got our starting lineup. We got I I want to get back to that bargain basement shopping. You know, like we already did the big trades that we normally don't do. Right. Trying to get to it, like uh, filling out this roster, <clears throat> and people don't realize like um, Anthony Dubar is no longer on this team. Um, obviously, we don't have Zeke, and Zeke would have been a role player going this year that we don't have. We got a whole right. bunch of uh, right. role players. Noah Brown, believe it or not, was a great role player for you. Mm -hmm. Luke Gifford, a great role player for you. These are a lot of uh, places that we don't have anymore. So uh, I always think like. I, we brought in Ronald Jones today. Um, yeah, they, they brought him I, in for a cup of coffee. I, I don't know if the coffee was hot or was it cold or was it iced coffee, but we'll find out by the end of business day. I hope it was his perfect his perfect cup of coffee because I would really like to see him play a role on okay. this team as maybe like a, a third running back because um, he's a young guy that we could he um, he's a young guy that we can go forward with. He has Super Bowl experience. Um, he's ready for the big moments. He's been on two Super Bowl teams in the last five years, so. Um, that's just just bring him in even for good luck, huh? <laughs> He's a two-time <laughs> Super Bowl champion. You know, I feel you, man. Bring him in. Hey, man, we just want you to sit on the bench just for good luck, man. It, it just seems and appears that you get to the Super Bowl, you know. <laughs> I exactly. feel you on that. I feel and you. And we, uh, we don't have a lot of places in depth like uh, Jason Peters is no longer on his roster. Right. So just like, uh, there's a lot of good free agents out here. Um, I guess we gotta stay patient till after the draft, but I, that's where I really want to um, see us fill in now. Like, get Will, you say you, we, I trust Will McClay too. Um, I met him a few times in person. Mm -hmm. He's a really nice guy. Um, I, I trust him to fill out their roster because that's where we're really going to get our Super Bowl, um, our Super Bowl roster from from the uh, the back end of this thing. So yeah, yeah. Now now, so it was unique the way you said it that you, you truly believe that the Cowboys should get back to bargain base shopping right now. And if you don't find anything, pretty much go into the draft. And then after the draft, they re-up some more there? Or or you think that 
just yeah. just stick to the old philosophy for what they used to do last year. I feel like after the draft, we're gonna. Uh, I, we don't. We don't make too many big uh, splash moves after the draft. I feel like, or during the draft, at that. So I feel like we, the next move you'll really see after this point is probably going to be in training camp. Like we, um, you know, because you know we like to, you know, like we see, like you said, we like to win on our deals. So these old players are going to be signed during training camp. Like maybe. I, I doubt Bobby Wagner, uh, Bobby Wagner will last till July, but um, maybe a Bobby Wagner or one of them, um, you know, a, a player of that caliber to fill at the bottom end of the roster, but right. like a veteran uh, versus bargain basement shopping, basically. I feel, I feel you like, I'm like halfway agreeing with you, believe it or not, uh, DM, uh, <clears throat> DMV George. I feel you, man. I'm like, I'm like in the middle. I'm in the middle with what you're saying. Like, uh, I asked for the Cowboys to give us one or two uh, big splashes, and uh, they, they gave us one or two, right? They gave us two right now, <laughs> right? And th- these are not just drops in the water. These are kind of like big splashes, right? Gilmore and and uh, Cooks. Although this shouldn't yeah. count as free agents, right? <laughs> but th- these do count as moves. Uh, because these were trades, so I feel you, fam. Hey, I hope I'm wrong though. I hope we make another. I'm, this is why I'm guessing they're going to do, but I hope we make another splash. Like I would send Michael Gallup in a second round pick to Seattle in a heartbeat for DK Metcalf. I mean, God, no, like now, now, now. I said earlier I wouldn't trade Michael Gallup. Now for that, I'm listening. You know what I mean? I'm very much listening. <laughs> He's he's a really he's an expensive uh, receiver, and they can't get a quarterback, and they're gonna move off of him in a year or two because in two in uh, the 2024 year he'll be taking 25 of the cap hit, and then in the 2025 years he's gonna be taking 30 million dollars of the cap hit. Yeah. So they're gonna be looking to move off him pretty soon. But um, yeah, I mean, I hope we get another. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope, I hope we get, make another splash on like a younger player. Um, nothing wrong with the old players, but. Something that we could build with going forward, and uh, all all that young good. stuff gone now. All of the young guys done, right? It's dried up. The market well, not is dried like up. Experience young, but not because mm-hmm. like Ronald Jones is a young player, but he's not inexperienced at all. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel. I I would prefer. How old is Kareem Hunt? He got to be uh, 26, 27. 26, yeah, and he's not inexperienced at all. So he's I consider him a young player. I give me Kareem Hunt around this mug, man. And and, and I, the only thing that the Cowboys may be uh, reluctant or or kind of like not all the way in on Kareem because he voiced his uh, displeasure of being a split back over there in Cleveland. You know, he wanted to be the. I think I heard, and it could, I could be wrong, but I think he wanted out because he wanted that role again as to be the number one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I feel like he, I I I want more than a split back. I want a, um that third and fourth running back that we can really. I don't want a two headed monster. I want it. I want um. What you want? A a, a Russian attack of like, like a, maybe three or four backs in the room. Oh, just just keep coming at them, you know, like uh, the Patriots yeah. when they won their last Super Bowl, and then when the Bucks won their last Super Bowl, and when even if you go all the way back to the I hate to bring them up, the Eagles when they won their Super Bowl, uh, they were coming at you at all different angles with those running backs. I, I feel you, yeah. I, I would love to, I would love to see that in Dallas. Yeah, and like this is a quick last point. So I want to somebody else here, but like. Um, no team has won a Super Bowl spending more than two million on the running back. So like, that's mm. that's kind of where that that comes from. We already spent ten million on um and I'm, in the last ten years. Let me add that. Okay, okay. In the last yeah, yeah. ten years, no team has run uh, won a Super Bowl spending more than two million on the running back. So oh, we already damn. spent ten million on Tony. He's gonna he's gonna return on that investment um, if he comes off this injury like we think he's going to. But besides that, like you fill a room with running backs, and that's how you win a Super Bowl. It's not with a thirty yard uh, thirty carry back. That you're paying um, plus ten to two mil to, or plus, um, you know, Zeke number. I feel you. Stuff. I feel you, man. Hey, man, I really appreciate you so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, hey, you, you started your YouTube groove yet, or or any of the um, content? I got. I, I'm, I'm still on my Twitch. I, I, Twitch. I have old YouTube uh, vlogs and stuff. I'm, I used to um, edit videos and stuff on my channel, DMV George. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. All right, you know, man. I'm a, I'm a college uh, business business major too. 
Business major too. What's your what's your focus in concentration in? Uh, um, uh, finance. Finance. What where where are you uh, trying to go work at? Public sector, private sector. Um, probably, uh, probably a, a private sector. Um, with my father, he has a um, we have we has a security business, and uh, you know, out of the DMV area, we uh, a lot of contractors in DC. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, uh, public contracts or private contracts? Private contracts. Private sure. contracts. Why, why you don't want to entertain yeah. the public? Is he, is your father military? Um, no, no, no. He's a police officer. Police officer. So oh, officer. Former police, police officer. officer. And I haven't really entertained the public, um, side of it yet. I haven't really done my research on it yet. Hey man, just, uh, uh, hit me up, man. Uh, the GOV, man, we got a lot of good stuff over there for uh, that. But it w- it would really benefit if he if he was a veteran, though, because I know some, okay. some good I know some good stuff on that side. And I can tell, speak my wisdom teeth. But uh, congratulations on that, especially on the financial arm. That nothing sneeze at. So you already understood what I said with the base, you know. <laughs> you yeah, already know what I'm talking that. about. I'm going through that right now. I got I gotta um, take extra classes right now because I'm not even in my um, my major. I'm only a sophomore, so yeah. I gotta take an extra math class right now to even uh, qualify for my business program. Man, no doubt, man. Hey, hey, I'm on. Yeah congratulate you in advance and uh, continue to grind, fam, and you'll get there. No problem. Thank you. No doubt, man. Um, yeah, that's a good call from DMV, man. Uh, been following the channel <laughs> when he was at high school, <laughs> so I know, uh, you know, he got a great deed of – of knowledge and, and, and uh, understanding of where I'm coming from. Goodbye. And all of that good stuff. Appreciate y'all so much. He was the last caller. Uh, appreciate y'all, man. Be sure to hit that like button, share this content, uh, and continue to grind, to shine. And also understand the way they handle their business, working for yourself. That, hey, 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 that's a good way, man. Shoot. And working for his father, man. Shoot. I just hit me. DMV George could be the next Stephen Jones for his father organization, right? <laughs> so that's good, man. That's flat out good. That's flat out good, y'all. Um, that's job security and everything. So, hey, work for yourself, man. But then jump in. And try to scoop up those contracts that's in the public sector too, though you know, because they got uh, tons and tons of remuneration that is available for you all, and uh, continue to grind. All right, so I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Um, one other thought that I was going to bring about: if there are other content creators, be sure to follow and find them. I think that my people, Vach and uh, Scott, they may be live right about now. They get live at 3, 3.30-ish. So uh, y'all be sure to check them out, Boss Cowboy Sports, as well as uh, West Coast and and uh, and my other guys, man. So many crews out there that's been putting in that hard work, work action. Jay Tuck been putting in a lot of good stuff, as well as um, uh, some of the, uh, the blogging the boys and – and a whole bunch of guys. Okoye, man, he's been on it. Uh, I was thinking about um, BM said, do you know football? No, I don't know football, dog. You just, I don't even know football, bro. <laughs> you know, you know more than me. I don't know football at all, BM. Bowel movement. You know, I'm on my bad, uh, big money, my bad, big money. I don't know football, though. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't know it, you know. <laughs> Man, you're a good guy, though. He allowed me to pick on you a little bit. But shout out to BM. Um, <clears throat> the Dallas Cowboys must figure things out. And at the end of the day, they've been uh, on this pace of of doing things that they used to do in the past. No more. <laughs> they've been doing things a, the proper way of being a little risque, willing and dealing a little bit. And that's what I said I wanted those boys to do. I wanted them to dance a little bit in free agency and see what they can do to help this team out in the best way possible. And they've been doing those things. Uh, shout out to those. Let me see if I, I le- left anybody out that super chatted. I appreciate y'all before I get up out of here. Uh, shout out to you, Zach. Jerry probably thinking he's running out of time with all of those splash making moves. Yes. And then we had um, 
We have two number ones, Dr. Jack. Appreciate you as well. All right, so thank y'all for y'all support. And I, if I miss you out, oh, here we go. Antoine Darden says, love the progress. Run it right now. Keep cooking, Law Nation from North Carolina. Law hit the crying drop for the Eagle Boys. Laugh out loud. <laughs> and then we have another super chat from Frederick Jamison. My thoughts on Zeke. If Zeke see the market, Ain't what he would like. Maybe he will circle back. Maybe he will circle back with the hometown discount along with us drafting a running back. Let me know if y'all want Ezekiel Elliott back for cheap. That's a lot of pride, though, baby. Shout out to you, Sadiq. That's a lot of pride to come back to your home with less money. When mama said, go out there and bring money back, you know. Um, do y'all agree? Would you want Ezekiel Elijah Elliott back? Do y'all want it? Appreciate you, Mark. He says, law, nation sports. I feel like your news is better than anything media alpha. I appreciate you, bro. Yes, yes, yes. Darnell says, yes. SEC is not hard. I appreciate you. Uh, Al Karev says, yes, of course. Everybody said, yes. All you got to do is say yes. <laughs> so no no's, man, only if it's cheap. So I believe that a lot of people wanted to get rid of Ezekiel Elliott, not because of his production. Believe it or not, it was because of the pay. Damn. D.O.K. says, no, sir. Swerve says, no, man, nope. Okay, I feel you, man. <laughs> All right, so uh, I think I read that one already. Eagles going to have 40 compensatory picks. You're right, you know. <laughs> uh, right, uh, let's see what we got here. FJS Gecko says, Law, we use our comp pick for Cooks. Let's go, baby. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one there, though. Uh, yeah, you're right. We did. We trade them. Trade them away. Trade them away, baby. All right. All right. Let me make sure I want to catch all of y'all. Uh, Zach says, Jerry probably thinking he's running out of time. Yes, you're right. I think I read that one already. Uh, Jake McQuaid is gone. That sucks. Another hole to fix on special teams. Weekend. Damn. Damn. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out how to uh, re-up that Jake McQuaid because we need us a long snapper, man. We can bring the other one back, you know. Uh, but I feel you on that one, Chief. You think the front office exercise trading gallop, uh, for what I heard, Adam Thielen was in the mix with the Dallas Cowboys on his uh, way out, but he signed with the um, – let me refresh my uh, my Defy Talk uh, guy page over here. And, you know, there was in uh, conversations with that. So, I don't know, man. Um, but we'll find out down the line. I would love to keep Michael Gallup for one more year and see what he can and can't do. I get it. A lot of people want to throw him out like the baby in the bathtub. But throwing the baby out with the bath water, you know, and um, just hold on to it one more year. No, you like to hold on to players. Well, it wasn't his fault that the Cowboys try to rush that dude. All right. Uh, Jamison says that Donald Driver was shot. Oh, Donald Driver was short. Okay. Woo. I thought I read that wrong, and I did read it wrong. Okay, my hooked on phonic eye is not working. Uh, that would be him should say, hey, man, do, do you know how to read? <laughs> uh, Donald Driver was shot or short. Uh, let me see how short he was. Let me see. My bad. I keep reading that wrong. Uh, I know he went to – I know he went to uh, Alcorn. Mm, six foot. It's not tall. It's not short, you know, but it's tall enough. And if somebody's 5'11", 5'10", 6 foot, there ain't no major difference in between those, you know. That's that's different world when you're 6'3", six, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, right, versus being 6 foot. 
So you're right. He was short. And it's perspectives, too. You know, if if, so, if everybody in the household, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and then you got one to six foot, then you say, hey, he, he, he's short. But everybody in the house, five foot, five, five, six, and he's six foot, then everybody would say he's tall. And uh, in the words of Cat Wim, either he was big and got small or he was small and got big. You know, he was catching them balls. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> a horrible way to put that in there, but I did. Uh, all right, so Cowboy Nation, I really appreciate y'all so much. That was all of the super chats, and let's go, Choctaw, Montana. Yeah, <laughs> damn. <laughs> let's get on up out of here, man. I right, appreciate y'all. One love, man. Uh, continue to support the nation. Subscribe, sharing is caring. Let's go, Cowboy Nation. The name is Law Nation. And on the way out, understand these things. <laughs> Godson says, pause. Yeah, because I, I forgot what Cat Williams really said at the end. <laughs> yeah, good old Cat Williams, man. Good old Cat Williams. He starts speaking too much truth. And he's blackballed out of the whole entire situation. Some people can't speak the truth. Some people can. They call it selective outrage. That's what Chris Rock said. Selectively. A lot of people look back at these things that the Cowboys may do and say it's not enough. Some people will say it is enough. Some people will look at this team last season and say it was enough last year. Even with Noah Brown, even with, and I'm not picking on Noah Brown, may he have a great career in Texan land, right? Even with Michael Gallup coming back from an ACL deal, even with the Cowboys picking up T.Y. Hilton. But I can tell you guys, selectively speaking, that by letter of the law, we are better already than what we were last year without even playing a single game. One reason is this. We have wisdom and understanding with the philosophy now. We don't have someone with a maybe. We don't have someone that's saying that, hey, if, Remember this, if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs type of talk. But write this down. How bad do you want it? And I've been saying this for years. It helped me in my darkest times. It's the mentality aspect of it. It's understood that base is base. Regardless, information, knowledge is power. Cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred. So the power and the energy that you guys got can never go away if you apply it right. Everyone is gifted and birthed with 24 hours a day. And the two plus two that you learn here is the same in China, Guam, New Mexico, North America, South America, it's the same. Two plus two is the same. That's the base, and that's knowledge. But write this down. If you want a thing bad enough to go out there and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep, if all of your desires of it makes you quite mad enough that you don't get tired of it, and it makes you all hold everything tawdry and cheap, if life itself seems empty and useless without it, and all that you scheme and dream is about it, if you will gladly go out there and sweat for it, fret for it, or plan for it, and lose all terror of your mind. If you would simply go after the thing you want with all of your capacity, strength and scargacity, with faith, hope, and confidence. If neither cold poverty or famish or fame or sickness of your body or brain can turn you away from the thing you want. If dogged and grim and besieged and beset with the help of almighty cowboy nation, guess what? 
you will get it. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Let's go. The name is Law Nation. Roll those credits. Damn! <laughs> Real power. Yeah. I just want to run it up. Can we check or something? I'm really in the film letter. Yeah. Wanna, uh. I've been really in the field, a lot of rush, I love the feel Lately I just wanna run it up Don't need no deals, I make the deal Have to take it to a meal Lately I just wanna run it up Breaking news, the Cowboys signed Dante Fowler to a one-year deal, according to sources that was just texted to me from Coach Marv. Let's see if the sources are correct. And Dante Fowler, let's see. Uh, I think it should be a one-year deal. Let's see if I can find anybody that's reporting on that news, if uh, that is correct. And I don't see it. Uh, so, Coach Bob, let me see. Man. Hold on, Coach Bob. Uh, wait a minute. You might have. Did he, did he get me, y'all? Come on, man. Coach. I need somebody else. For the reference, man. Did he sign or did he didn't sign, y'all? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, did you catfish me, Coach Marv? Let me see. Uh, Fowler, you know, let me see if he anywhere around here. Let's see. Fowler, okay. Oh, let me see. We can do it like this, then. Copy this. Let's go to uh, boom, boom, boom. Sometimes he spells his name. Hey, he's a junior. All right, now let me see. Man, did he sign or did he didn't sign? You know, did Coach get me? Did he get me? Did he click make me? Let me see. He somebody got to say that he signed somebody. Come on, man. That was five hours ago. Developing Cowboys are working. That's March the thirteenth. Uh, all right, I'm looking everywhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it sit for. Oh uh, man, he said F that team. All right, let me see if I can go to. Somebody, man, y'all help a brother out now, man. <laughs> Let me put Cowboys at the end. Let me see if that can find it. Anybody got this breaking news? <laughs> Do anybody got this breaking news? Shame. 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 Now, somebody clickbait me with this one. Cowboys sign Yannick. <laughs> Maybe he clicked on one of those articles. Cowboys sign Yannick Ngagwe versus oh versus. Oh uh, man, that's a clever way to put it on the. Uh, that's a clever way to get somebody to click on that article. All right, all right, ah uh, dog man. All right, so not yet. Coach Marv, man. Coach Marv, you owe me. You owe me a drink or something, man. <laughs> You owe me what, man? Hey, bro, come on now, dog. <laughs> come on, man. But I do have. Damn. Damn. I do have this breaking news. <laughs> Whoa. I got some this breaking news. Do we do it? We answered. I talked stuff. I thought we had it. But it goes to show you who's the better team. <laughs> and I'm sticking Cowboys. You're, you're crying. You're crying. I'm hurt. I love my Eagles. I don't believe it. You gonna clap ahead one more time for the Eagles? One more time for me. For the Eagles. One more time for the Eagles. Let's go, birds fly, Eagles fly. Still Super Bowl champion. <laughs> now we can roll those credits, man. Coach Ma Hood winked me, man. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Emotional, 
Man, y'all playing around with me, man. Maybe Coach Marv is right. But if I'm Fowler, I wouldn't sign a one year, man. Give me give me one of those three years, man. I know you got one in you. <laughs> give me a two year deal at least. Shout out to y'all, man. Uh, appreciate y'all. Shout out to Pookie, Ray Ray, Asha, Niqua. Come on. Greens and pinks is all the same. I still sit and roll my chains. Take some losses when I play. Charge it to the game. I'm with L, yeah, I'm with T Black, I'm with Rabbit now. I'm with Bay, I'm with J, I'm with Riggs! Fred Day, common sense laugh. Kool Aid, one for each finger. Antoine, Darden, Darren, DMV Cowboy. Shout out to all of the DMVs out there. Dr. Jack, Zach, and Dab Dizzle. Did we sign Fowler though? Come on, let me check one more time. I just want to run it up. Come on. Nineteen hours ago, let me go to his. Hey. Hey. Too many foes. Come on. Can you flap the hat one more time? <laughs> John Beasley. All right. Until next time. With the 26th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select Tanner McKay. <laughs> oh, my God. That's my guy right there, Scorpio. We're going to get on up out of here, but before we get on up out of here, let's slow it down for everyone who likes the slow stuff. FBI, open up! Let's go. Shout out to you, Gina with the J. Let me go over some of the people that cashed out. I appreciate y'all on my way out and departing, leaving you with nothing but the best of hits and oldies. Magic 9720. The law. Again. Calvin Richard, appreciate you for the cash out. Julius, appreciate you for the goat of socials. Thank you for the cash out. Gina with the J. Thank you. For the 50 cash app, I thank you. Sean Mack. Whatever you do. Salute. For the cash app. Thank you. Gosh. Kelvin Mays. Did you meant to send this, Kelvin? $75 cash app. Appreciate you. For nothing but love for law. Thank you. Come on. Deanna, thank you so much for the cash out. Dirty Deanna. Reginald Downey, thank you for the cash out. Player two. 
I follow. Come on. Robbie Gold is out there for a kicker. We can pick him up. Jay Business, appreciate you. Yeah, Coach Maul, man, you, you know. You done got me, man. <laughs> Y'all be catfishing the law. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Until next time. Salute. I got the longest outro in life, though. <laughs> About 45 minutes long. You know, like, long, man, I thought you were gone, man. I left, came back from the stoke, and you still alive. That brother's still alive. Because you don't miss. No, he's good. That mother don't miss, man. In the heat of battle, he don't miss. No. In the heat of controversy, he don't miss.